uh, fellow progressive forces. Uh, I'm in the township. That is shop right over there. That is shop right. So shop right, pick and pay, spa have taken over township economy. And that's how the system runs, right? And go and ask, uh, do a research as to, um, you know, the percentage of the number of products that are on the shelves in, in, in pick and pay, in shop right and spa, you know, you'll then realize that in actual fact, majority of those products, um, I stand to be corrected, are white owned products. You can go and, and check, verify these facts. So what we need to do, black people need to create their own system. Chinese have got China malls where their products are, you know, found and be sold. Um, you know, Indians have got, you know, safe malls and all of that. Why can't black people build a state-of-the-art supermarket that is going to be, you know, a center or a home uh, of black people where they will actually go and put their product ads because racism, systematic racism operates like that, right? And we are using our buying power to support, you know, um, to support uh, ShopRite and all of that. So I'm saying, so we need our own systems as black people. We need our own systems. We need to build a state-of-the-art supermarket. Why can't black people with money come together, put money together and build a state-of-the-art supermarket? We are not doing so. So that black people who are excluded, they know that actually this is where we're going to put our products at. So we as black people, we, 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 we are fragmented. We are divided. That's why you've got spaza shops. White people don't have spaza. They've got pick and pay. They've got uh, shop right. That's where they unite, put the resources together, build a state-of-the-art supermarket, and that's where you are going to be attracted by that state-of-the-art and whatever it is in there and support them. So why can't we come together as black people and form a formidable, you know, sort of, you know, a, a arrangement in terms of building the state-of-the-art supermarket so that black people who've got product, they know where to take uh, those products to. Because this system is systematic racism of the highest order in South Africa. We complain of Spaza shop, uh, 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 Pakistanis who have taken township economy and all of that. Let me tell you, the biggest beneficiaries of township economy is actually white people. There's chicken pay, I mean rather shop right. There's shop right, you can see. There's shop right in the township. There is no township without shop right, pick and pay, uh, uh, spa and all of that. They've taken over township economy so we attack the weak we don't actually go after those who benefit more you should be the ones south africans those who are in the township benefiting from township economy using our buying power to really ensure that uh, we change the whole system hi guys uh today's video is something that i wanted to share with you guys because it is things and these discussions that we should really have because they really make sense so this is a black man that was telling um black people around the world that we should start to you know support ourselves and our businesses and who we are and really put in effort in doing things that better us as a people especially when it comes to the spending power because let's be realistic it's us as black people that are always consuming a lot of other people's products and it's the reality when it comes to the music yes we are good at producing it but I mean, who is gaining more when it comes to it also? Uh, when it comes to sport, yes, we are the ones participating a lot, but who are the ones sponsoring that kind of activity? When it comes to clothes or manufacturing, where are we getting the things from? It's mostly from other groups of people and they understand that we love nice things, but we can't actually put in the effort to support our own and make or produce those certain things and the example i can give is uh, mr dangote the richest man in africa uh, who was or actually has a refinery but apparently he's being put down by his fellows like no one is supporting him in power to, to see like you know what an african man has come up and he's building this thing that i mean it's, it's going to help us as a nation and of course Africa has most of the resources, but 
guys, we don't manufacture most of the products or the end products that are from those raw materials. So an African man to want to do a refinery, so we don't have to import oil that we can refine it. We already have it in the in the ground. We have it in our countries. So the only thing we need is like the support. And if we are able to do that, it's going to help us like a nation, right? No, it's not what is happening. The government, like the government, is literally giving more opportunities to the foreigners, the Koreans, the Asians, the other groups of people to be the ones to come and put up a refinery, apparently. Like, they are not even supporting their own, and that clearly shows you where we stand as a people, and it's really disturbing. It's really, really disturbing. The Nigerian government has approved a proposal by South Korean investors to build four new refineries in the West African nation. Nigeria says each of the four refineries, which will be built in different parts of the country, will have a capacity of processing up to 100,000 barrels of crude per day. Nigeria's Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Heineken Lokobri, said on Tuesday, South Korean group of investors has since been invited to lay the groundwork for construction. One of the reasons why I don't talk about Nigeria and the things that go on in Nigeria is the solution to Nigeria's problems are straight up very simple. It's violence. The only solution to the problems in Nigeria is straight up violence, meaning People in government need to be unalived. Their children need to be unalived. It needs to be a violent revolution in Nigeria. And the reason I don't say that is it would be incredibly hypocritical of me to sit here in New York telling people in Nigeria to go start shit when I will not be there to suffer the consequences of what I'm telling people to do. Don't go to refinery. The refin second largest um, refinery in the world and the largest private owned refinery in the world is in Nigeria right now. It has the capacity to refine 650,000 barrels a day. They won't give it to him. They want to invite foreigners to build four different refineries that will combine 100,000 a day. Or let's assume it's 100,000 each. That's 400,000 barrels a day. We already have one that can do 650. Or, or it's either 50,000 barrels a day each and now they're But the reason this is happening is because Dongote, it, like they're making this man a martyr. And my only, the only thing I will say is those South Koreans, let them leave Nigeria with blood. Every, every single one of them, wherever they are doing their groundbreaking, whatever for their refineries, get communities together. Let those people walk away with blood. That's it. They have to go back home with their heads split open with bandages. And, but that's I, saying all of that living in New York. Not suffer, but Nigerians, I don't know. I, I don't know. You're the one, you know, you're gonna have to decide what you stand for. Because is bag of rice gonna turn you away? Or you're watching a bunch of Koreans coming in to take your livelihood. To the same Korea that if you travel, they'll cover their noses because you're sitting on the train. I know I'm ashy, I just did dishes. But. What can we say? I thought building a refinery like this is, I mean, supposed to be a pride for everybody. Because we are not the only country. Angola, they've been trying for 20 years. They are still trying. Uganda, they've been trying for the last 15 years. None of them. There is no production capacity in Africa. Only two countries are not importing, which is, uh, you know, Algeria and Libya. Apart from this, everybody is an importer. We cannot continue to be slaves while we export, uh, you know, uh, raw materials, then we import products. But you can see a regulator is giving an excuse to continue to issue license for bad products just because he said that no. They don't want to create a monopoly. So how can we create a monopoly? Guys, it's absolutely and absolutely 
sad that we are seeing a black man being put down by by his own people they are choosing another group of people over him but we are still going to come out the same people and be like oh the problem is the other people from the other nations no 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 no. at this point in time it is the government that is seeing this black man doing something for nigeria but kind of seeing it like a problem like no 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 it's not going to it's not going to be worth it we need to invite these other groups of people they are the ones that understand how to do business they are the ones that understand how to build things and it's freaking annoying like you look at these things and you're like oh my god what is going on in the african world in the african continent this is ridiculous it's it's so disturbing that him being a richest man in Africa still has to also come out and talk about how difficult still it is for him to move around or within Africa for business. And this is what I always talk about when Marima says we need a borderless Africa so we are able to trade within ourselves. Like this richest man also has issues that he has to spend a lot, a lot of money for him to look and move within the continent, like make it make sense. I need 35 visas to travel within Africa, says Africa's richest man, Aliko Dangote. The billionaire has criticized the challenges that investors face when traveling within the continent. He mentioned that with his Nigerian passports, he needs 35 different visas. At the Africa CEO Forum annual summit held in Kigali, Rwanda, he expressed his frustrations to President Paul Kagame noting that things like this do not happen in places like France. He compared his situation with that of Patrick Puyane, the chairman of Total Energies, who does not need 35 different visas on his French passport to travel within Africa. Dangote emphasized the need for regional markets to function effectively before the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement can be successful. These are clearly things that we see happening and I mean we see them as not kind of important and every time I see how other African people are like oh we don't need other African people in our countries like we, we should not you know open borders I'm like are these people even serious because when we look into our ancestors lives they used to trade within themselves they used to move and be in different parts of the world and this is what Malema is always saying that Opening borders doesn't mean people are going to be stuck in other people's countries. Because, I mean, guys, I can travel to different countries if I can, but still I'll go back home because home is always home. But it's like we Africans think that when other, let's say, African people come into our countries, they're just going to come and take over. And then you're asking yourself, like, take over what? When even when majority of things big big things in production or most of the things are mostly controlled by the other groups of people so what are we conditioning ourselves are we just we, we just love seeing ourselves down and come out and complain because this really sickens it really sickens but yeah guys let me know what you think about this situation i mean you heard what the south african brother was saying we need to promote and support our own but then we have here nigeria putting a black nigerian man down to sponsor south koreans to do the same job that the black man already started when it's not been happening in african countries make it make sense make it make sense guys that is it for me in the video really thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video